welcome to our AEW Revolution preview show here, proudly sponsored by Beercade YEG here in Edmonton. We are going to be hosting a watch party for AEW Revolution, 105 84 82nd Avenue, $5 highballs, $6 tequila. You can buy me whatever you want. I don't mind. Uh, but how rude of me. I am Mike the Ref Maloney, senior editor here at uh, Backbreaker Video and Backbreaker Media, and I am joined by the lovely, the awesome, the super talented, the woman who gets everywhere all the time, <laughs> the natural Astrid Pizarro. Astrid, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm doing fantastic. For, for reference sake for everybody here, we are recording this just after AEW Dynamite on March 1st. So if anything's added after that, it ain't on me. I've done what I can. So, uh, But there is something interesting that you've been doing here over the last few weeks that really pertains to AEW AEW's cousin ROH. You were actually in the uh, crowd for the ROH uh, tapings uh, last week. Yeah. So, how was the experience there? I, I I did manage to get to see the pictures of what the arena looked like, and it looked very familiar to a lot of their tapings that they had before. Uh, what kind of vibe was there? What 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 were your thoughts of the uh, whole ROH experience? from a fan in the arena's point of view. I like this setup because it felt more intimate. I feel like I was like really close to the action. I really enjoyed that. And I feel like there was rare moments that the crowd was really quiet. It was weird. So I like that they were very active. We were always chanting for somebody that whoever was in the ring or whatever was happening there. Um, but yeah, just like it was weird in that aspect because I've been there for Impact before and it just, it looks completely different. So I never would have thought that that's where Impact used to be. Uh, but I love the setting of it, though. Um, I I like how I went in. I came in late because my brother was working. And I thought I was going to be standing up. And then all of a sudden, they found those chairs right by the ramp. So I was able to see everybody as they came in through the entrance there. So it was pretty cool being like that close to them as well. And seeing so many people that I've enjoyed, but seeing them live for the first time, like really stark, like I interviewed her like not too long ago. So to be able to see her in person, it felt like very surreal. So uh, little things like that. Um, I had to leave early, so unfortunately I didn't finish the tapings, but I'm hoping that I can be there more often since they'll be in Orlando, you know, set in stone for the you know, foreseeable future at least. Yeah, for people that are familiar, they are running the uh, ROH tapings at the AEW Dark facility, I do believe, which is the old TNA facility down there uh, in beautiful mm -hmm. Florida here. So, um yeah, Astrid, I just, it, it, it amazes me the uh, the correlation, almost the feel that you get from having, being able to interview these people. By the way, if you haven't checked out Astrid's YouTube channel, I'll have it down in the show notes as well. Check it out. A lot of great, cool interviews on there, as well as the Ladies Wrestling Showcase and the uh, um, making an impact review show that are also simulcast on backbreaker video we got to get you over to astrid's channel because she's got special stuff as well and early access to all these videos so uh how's it how did it feel to see all these people that you've interviewed going into the ring sort of like billy starks and that just right right in front of you like that it feels so weird seeing her like in person and there's obviously people that i want to interview in the future like those lady frost that i got to see there uh the renegade twins i've never seen in life either before um and seeing the briscoes i i've only been to one ring of honor show and it was a super card when it was in new orleans so it introduced me to a lot of people at that time there but being there it just felt like that whole different vibe and yeah just like i love seeing athena and seeing willow there was another one that was there as well in Madison Rain, Sky Blue, from you know, from the part that I was able to watch, but I, I love the tapings. I love there was a balance between like, oh, you know, all the divisions they have. So I'm hoping you know moving forward that it it looks great on on at least on their honor club, so they can do it more often. And you know, I would like at least more women's matches. That's the only thing I would say. But you know, it is me, so I'm always gonna say that. You know. Though. Oh, we're definitely uh, we're definitely on the same page with that when it comes to more women's matches, which. I know we're going to get to the uh, women's match on the card here coming up for Revolution. 
one thing I found, let, let's shift gears here. Let's get into this uh, AEW Revolution pay-per-view. And I know there's only one women's match here, but there's also, mm-hmm. as of right now, we're looking at about 7.5 matches. And I'm counting one as a point five. We'll get to that in just a moment here. Um, what is your, like, I know you've checked out a few of the AEW pay-per-views yourself. How is it going to feel the fact that we have half of the number of matches that we normally have on a regular card with uh, Tony Khan booking AEW? I'm glad it's less matches at least because I, I feel like I can survive the night <laughs> because for me being in the Eastern side last time, one of the last pay-per-views, it ended like at one in the morning and I woke the next day. So it's tough to watch it and enjoy everything after the long night when I have to wake up early the next day. So that's what I will always hoped for this Saturday pay-per-views at least for me. But I'm hoping that being it's a shorter, you know, shorter card that it'll be a little bit more reasonable in that aspect of it is... I'm like, I work the next day. I want to watch my wrestling too. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, my my feeling is uh, I, I know a lot of people get burnt out halfway through the show and then they just don't. There's there's that semi-main that does, doesn't get the energy because everybody knows they're going to be fired up for the main event. But there's that semi-main that everybody just doesn't get up for. And it, it it's a real injustice because a lot of the times that semi-main will be the women's match or the women's title match in that case. And I think it deserves a lot more respect than it gets in many circumstances there. So, but let, let's get into this card here. And I mentioned before that it was 7.5 matches. Well, the 0.5 that I got right now is a match that I don't know whether it's going to be official or what kind of match it is, but the way that it looked, you got Jack Perry and Kristen Cage basically going back at each other in promos now where Christian challenged Jack Perry to a fight to which Jack Perry responded with coming out with a grave. Now, are we going to get a buried alive match here going on or what's going on or what are your thoughts on what they should do and what you think is going to happen here? Just me. I, I watch Impact too, and this happened not too long ago in Impact, so just like I don't know if I want to watch anything like this again. Um, but yeah, just interesting the way this is going forward with them. I thought this would have been over by now. So, like I, I know you watch AEW with your sidecast, but I've been watching it like not all the time. It's more it's taking a backseat to all the other stuff that I do. So I thought this would have been over at this point, but very lot alive. I don't know if it's coming good taste based on you know Jungle Boy's dad, you know that he passed. So. I don't like that part of it, but I guess we'll have to see if it's really buried alive. It, it also could be set up as a, uh, basically just saying that uh, he's taking away all the ghosts of his past. He's digging them up and he's dealing with them. Who knows at this point, but if it ends up just being some cinematic segment, I'd almost be happy with that just based on the fact that they'll probably shove it in the middle of the card and that'll be a place where I get to play some video games while I'm beer cage, so... I'll, I'll I'll say that straight up. I hope this ends, and I hope it either ends in Christian finally getting knocked down, or Jungle Boy getting knocked down to the point where he's taken off the air for a few months, so he can reset, repackage himself away from essentially the Jungle Boy gimmick that they've been trying to push him away from for the last while here. So, but let's move on to our next match up here, and this one's actually official. And it's so official that they're actually banning everybody from ringside on this one. As as we've been talking about booking what the, what the heck's here with Tony Khan, this one has been confusing, but hopefully this is the end to the rivalry. We got Ricky Starks versus Chris Jericho with the Jericho Appreciation Society banned from ringside. Now, this feud here is weird in the fact that we actually had the match to start the feud and now we're going to get a culmination of it here at Revolution. Astrid, your your thoughts on what has been developing here, and also who do you think is going to win this one at the end of this? I gotta be honest. It just I'm tired of Jericho and the Appreciation Society and him and his promos and him, him in the microphone. I don't want to get hate for it. I really don't care at this point. But I was like, Ricky is the future. So it's like, to me, you have to have him win over somebody big like Jericho, who's had such a big resume in AW so far. So it only makes sense for me, like, in that aspect for him to, 
grow from I mean, from that victory. And I just don't want Jericho to win. I'm just tired of him. I feel like he always wins, doesn't he? It just feels like that at this point. I just don't want him to win again as well. But I love Ricky, and I just want him to shine more. And I feel like that's one way to like show him off a little bit more and give him that momentum towards the championship again because I, I want him to be champion. Well, I think Ricky really needs a bounce back after uh, his match against MJF, which I think the consensus amongst Moats was uh, uh, Ricky didn't have his A-plus game on that match. Uh, neither did MJF, but at the same time, this feud with Jericho, I think there is a lot of fatigue in this just because of how it was booked, the fact that we got this match already once, and basically... Uh, Ricky's had to fight through so many steps to get the second time here. And it almost feels like it's almost feels like it's sort of being forced out our throats on this one. I would expect Ricky to get the victory here to end this off uh, and continue on as we're going along because Jericho's bulletproof at this point. I don't think there's going to be a real big issue. He's lost the ROH title to Claudio. Now he can lose that, uh, momentum any momentum he had in this feud he could just give it to ricky and let him ride with it which hopefully will send him back into the contenders picture going forward here but talking about ending some momentum man i'm full of segues tonight uh (laughs) we got a match here where somebody literally will end their momentum and their movement and won't be able to stand up a texas death match between john moxley who I think, honestly, I think it'd be easier for him just to get a can of red paint and just paint himself with it because, man, that was a lot of... Bl- I, I, I'd like to figure out, if if there's some mathematician watching this, figure out how much blood John Moxley has given up in the last month. I'll make it small numbers for you. Just make it the month that he's had here with this feud with Adam Page. And then you got Adam Page with this long-running story of redemption. And this almost feels like he's trying to close another chapter in that redemption here. In what essentially is Hangman's signature match here at AEW. Mm-hmm. Astrid, your thoughts and who do you think is going to come out on top on mm-hmm. this one? And don't say the uh, This is one of those. <laughs> no it's like i was gonna say a month is enough i feel like a month is a lot for moxie as well even with that little month um this one i'm very very torn about it because i love both guys and i feel like they could easily just go either way with it uh but i just feel like him and needs that win more than moxie. i feel like moxie wins more often and i feel like him and does need that push right now and like you said, it's his, it's his match. So it's like, it, it makes sense more to me that he wins it than lose it at this moment. And I just want him to like get back up and finish out the redemption story. So I would like for him to win it there. I'm like, Moxie just feels like he wins every single week at this point. Yeah, I don't want to get into this Mox wins Lollet thing, which I, <laughs> I, I, I think we're going to see that here with... Um... Well, we already talked about Jericho, so I guess we'd have to worry about that there. But I, I think the redemption story of uh, Hangman has a few more chapters to go in it. I think Adam Cole is going to be part of that as well going forward here. Mm-hmm. So I think it is necessary that uh, Hangman does win this match. Uh, there can be a way that uh, Moxley gets completely knocked out and they just they just end it somehow there. And this would be the perfect opportunity for Moxley to get a few months off, get a few weeks off, get a little vacation. Get on that vacation. <laughs> he, he deserves that vacation ever since the summer. And I think they have an initially when he had to come back out of that vacation, they really didn't have anyone set up to establish a real run in terms of who's going to be at the top. And now it feels yeah. like Tony Khan sort of got the pieces together somewhat that he can actually move on with some other people in that top spot whether it be champion or challenger so i do think hangman page should get the victory here and potentially get him moving on in his redemption arc like like you mentioned there Uh, speaking of redemption arcs and once again segues are us here (laughs) <laughs> um, we got a little bit of a redemption story here for a little bit of a haircutting with uh, 
I know Astrid, I know you're pretty upset with uh, Wardlow getting his hair cut there by Samoa Joe just randomly. <laughs> I find it rather backwards how they explained how after the point why it was so important, but I like it because it was something different. But mm-hmm. here at Revolution, we are going to have Samoa Joe defending the TNT Championship against Wardlow. Uh, Astrid, like this match here, we've seen already. We've seen Joe win mm-hmm. it. With the extra stakes at, at stake here, do you think Joe continues to be the king of television or do they separate those two, two championships now that ROH has their own programming? Yeah, that's exactly what I had in mind because now that they have the honor club and the, the ROH staping is happening more, more often, it just makes sense for him to focus on Ring of Honor and it help build that brand uh, back up again and just keep Warner as a TNT champion there and just, you know, keep that separated as it is. Um, I feel like Warner, I feel like we need that Warner. His, I don't want to say it was bad, but I feel like he, I want him to get like that, that rain that feels better than the, the other one. Because I feel like the other one was like, I don't want to say luckluster, but it was kind of at the same time. So I do want him to like redeem himself in that aspect of it with this rain. And like I said, just the part of like Ring of Honor is back up. So there's no point of, you know, Joe having two championships. Um, the other thing's gonna feel way more the tapings because when I watched him, he didn't have the two championships already ahead of time. But um, yeah, just that's the creation. <laughs> hey, they they already this. they spoil the whole card. <laughs> they spoil the whole card of this on their Twitter account. So there's nothing else spoiling in here now. Fair enough. Oh, but yeah, War- Wardlow totally deserves this. And then we're gonna get after we saw the uh, face of the Revolution ladder match tonight. We saw Hobbs. <laughs> won that and now it'll probably end up being that replaying running back as the kids would say Hobbs and Wardlow once again and that's a Haas fight I'm gonna love to see so but speaking of seeing once again I want to remind you I gotta get the sponsor plugs in here once again we are sponsored by Beercade YEG here at Edmonton 105 84 82nd Avenue we are going to be hosting a watch party there for uh, AEW Revolution, so save yourself the 50 bucks. Come wa- come watch it with friends. Uh, get some good food. Get some good drinks. $5 highball, $6, $6 tequila. Tip your servers, and, you know, everything will go great there. And bring some friends. And speaking of friends, let's get into uh, the Trios Championship, which... My God, am I like I am shaking anticipating this matchup here because we I think everybody thought at uh, at the tree when, when they had the tri- trios match it all out to determine the first champion. I think we all thought that the House of Black would be the first in line for it. Circumstances happened. We ended up delayed three months, but now six months later, we're getting the House of Black versus the Elite in what I think is going to be an absolutely spectacular match here uh, coming up for the Trios Championship. Your thoughts, Astrid? Yeah, just like you, I'm, I'm just, I know this one's going to be one of those that's going to steal the show. Uh, I love both groups, so it's hard to pick somebody, but I definitely want the House of Black to win. I just feel like they have the momentum going for them, and the crowd just wants something happening for them. They just want them to have those championships and, and have a good reign. And I feel like it will be fresh to have them be champions. I feel like the league can actually do other stuff at the, at the moment. So I would like to see House of Black winning it. And it was like, how cool would that interest be with them having the championship in hand? We got a little glimpse of it tonight. So it's like, might as well just make, you know, make it true at this point. Well, the House of Black, if they win this championship, will feel like that that real video game boss, in my opinion. Like, they're dark they're mysterious they're they're untouchable like ever since they've come back and formed their true trios team even with dan or sorry darby allen being the uh the kamikaze that he was to take out brody king the way that he did there wasn't a real sense that when the trio of uh, malachi black buddy matthews and uh brody king were together since they brought Julia Hart in as well as the manager, don't forget about her because she is definitely going to play a part in this. Oh, yes. But it is, uh, 
it, it's going to be very interesting to see if the elite can take out a team that has been so cohesive and so dominant for so long. And it's going to be interesting to see what Julia Hart does to Brandon Cutler outside the ring too. So on a side note there. But speaking of some crazy side notes, yeah, I'm getting these winged around all over the place tonight here. <laughs> the AEW World Tag Team Championships. Now, I don't know if you heard that collective thud around the world, Astrid, when uh, the Ass Boys, the Guns, won the AEW Tag Team Championships off the acclaimed. I think that was the collective, what the hell is going on here? Uh, moment in AEW for the last six months. There is a shot of redemption here tonight, uh, this Sunday, when the acclaimed get their rematch clause as part of a four way match with uh, Jared and Lethal and Orange Cassidy and Danhausen. Like, when that happened tonight, <laughs> it's like, sure. It, it, it's yeah. a really interesting wrinkle into this four-way match here um Astra, what are your thoughts and who do you think is going to win this one i'm like it has to be the acclaims i was like i don't want jared as champion no offense to him and lethal sorry and like we already have to go as champions like do we want to keep this going any further than it has been not really uh, i feel like dan has and oc will be like a like a swerve to it but i definitely think like the acclaim has to win it i feel like we're gonna get that reaction from the crowd and we'll love, they should have lost it in the first place and you know we love to see that happening and i can't really see them winning this if i'm like it'll be so weird like, even like looking at the graphic it looks weird to look at it and see like lethal and jared beating this match <laughs> like for a champion for the you know tag team championships like i can't believe it when i saw it but um um, I do feel bad for uh, the new best friends, but Dan Hansen and, and OCB in there, but I, I have to go with the acclaims. Could you, well, first of all, is this penance for having to work uh, Ric Flair in that Ric Flair's last match? Could this be like the, the reward for doing that? And two, could you just imagine the internet meltdown if we go from the ass boys to Jared and Lethal? with the heritage of the tag team championship. Like, I almost want to see that just to see the world burn. Seriously. They would lose that crowd if that happens. Like, totally would. Yeah, I, I'm with you that I think the acclaimed are, should be the ones to get it back here. Uh, the fact that Orange Cassidy already has a championship, you don't want to, you don't want to put two belts on the same person for too long. And they're, they are trying to defy that all Atlantic championship with him defending it constantly here which uh is great um i don't want to count the aw games title as a second championship even though he did lose it earlier this week to adam cole but mm. that's uh that's a whole different ball of wax there itself but yeah i th I'll, i want to see how much time they also give the acclaimed for their entrance because the amount of wrapping they can do on these three teams we, we could be sitting there for a good 10 minutes while they're just going on and on and on and basically burn everyone left, right, and center here. And hopefully they don't burn out the crowd at the same time. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but let, let's move on. We got two matches to go here. And I know you're really interested in this next match here because, well, you are the... Uh, women's aficionado here on uh backbreaker media as well you and melball are but i managed to quarter you for this one this this match here has so many interesting angles where this could go really really right or really really wrong we got ruby soho we got soraya taking on jb hater for the aew women's championship now i want to i don't want to even set up anything here astrid you have the floor here give <laughs> us your thoughts on this match all over the place here i know that you're upset that there's only one match on the card just go for it i'll let you go and i'll just respond after <laughs> here <laughs> uh, this is another one that i'm really torn about because i don't want jamie to lose the title 
but at the same time, I know we have kind of like, I, I want to say something like hanging in the balance here, of like the point of like, Ruby hasn't picked the side yet. So it's like, do we have Ruby and Sayra teaming up against Jamie and one of them wins the match? It's the part that I keep going back in my mind to. But like I said, it's like, I don't want Jamie to really lose this. And I feel like not only is the championship on the line, but we also have that aspect of like the picking sides to it. And it's like, you know, we need to have an end game to this at this point. We need to have some kind of announcement. Like, if you're going to do a blood and guts, then make it blood and guts. So whatever, you're going to make it happen. But um, I feel like they need to, you know, set it straight of like, this is what's going to happen sometime soon. And do whatever you have to do and move your pieces to make that happen. Because I I want to see what the real end game is here between all the ladies involved in this storyline. And it just I, I'm excited to see that part of it. But I just like I don't know who to pick as a winner because I'm also thinking like I love Saria, but I, I do I want her to win the title right now? I don't know if I do. I'm like debating that for it still. And I don't think Ruby's gonna win it though. So I my myself personally, I I'm getting a lot of diva vibes off of Saraya with this whole storyline with her and Tony. And I'm also getting a lot of uh Chris Jericho MJF vibes out of Saraya as well in terms of how the story's being booked. Um with things going on right now, it's 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 just a well-known fact that the faces chasing the heels for the championship is always the money matches. And the fact that you that you have Ruby Solo here who hasn't picked the side quite yet. I would love to see a point where Ruby still hasn't picked, but she ends up being instrumental for Soraya defeating Jamie Hayter to become the women's champion. And the chase leads to that aforementioned blood guts match, which usually takes place right in about a month from now, early April, right around Easter, you know, Got to have a good Friday killing somewhere in there. <laughs> Sorry, that was a bad one. My apologies. But uh, at the same time, watching Britt and Jamie chase after Tony and Soraya would be a great, great storyline. And that's the way the storyline should be in many ways right now. Um, and it, and it's, it's really refreshing. I'm going to say this is a big difference from what I've seen from other wrestling programs. Nobody in their right mind right now is thinking that Britt and Jamie are going to break up. Even mm -hmm. during the, during Jamie's initial part of the raid before Soraya got involved here, there was always that, okay, well, when's Britt going to turn on Jamie to go after the title? Because mm -hmm. everybody is so... I, I think the best way to explain it is WWE-ized because mm -hmm. that was the always the storyline. When does the partner turn on the other one so they can get a chance in the championship? I'm glad that that isn't happening here. Now, in terms of Ruby here, there is a possibility that Ruby could stay with JB and Britt going after the title, sort of as allies, soft allies, for lack of a better term here, so that uh, they all want the title. They all agree that the title should not be around Soraya and Tony and that's where you could get her teaming up with Britt and Jamie here moving forward or maybe Ruby gets her own kind of backup because mm -hmm. to me that th that to me would be the intriguing part is if Ruby gets a backup as well and we start seeing some pieces fit together here as much as I as much as nobody wants to talk about it, nobody thinks it's going to happen. I still think long term, we're going to see Mercedes as part of this feud here somewhere in this piece. And I think it might be going into that blood guts match because I think that might be something that would convince her to come in, come in to AEW. The fact that she could be part of the first all women's one. Mm -hmm. But to, to me, I, I do think that Soraya wins this not clean because Heaven forbid a hill win clean ever at AEW. <laughs> but I, I think she wins it so they can pr move this story in a different direction here. And it's sort of like the NWO winning the title. You got the title, you got the power. So. But speaking of power and stamina and energy, and that's the last segue I got to do because it's the last match. <laughs> we got a one-hour Iron Man match. MJF 
Brian Danielson. Now this match here, I, I think, I think the match with Takeshita proved a lot to a lot of people for MJF in terms of what he could do in the ring if he really wants to. And Daniel said, well, I could list all his accomplishments, but I'd like to keep this show under, you know, three hours. So um, we all know the qualifications of O'Brien Danielson. And this is essentially MJF having to go into Danielson's match to prove that he's better than him. At the end of this, do we see MJF still as the AEW world champion? And is it just a clean victory or is there some ultra controversy to it? I was like, it's MJF. There always has to be a controversy to it somehow. <laughs> My bad. Um, <laughs> uh, this one, oh, geez. It just my heart wants Brian to win it, but I just like with the storytelling, it makes me feel like MJF is gonna keep it. So I just I I had that back and forth on this one for a while now. But it's just like thinking of an Ironman match and the way Daniel show you know, Daniel can wrestle. I just want Daniel to win this. Um, I really do. I feel like it will be a, a great showcasing for him. And it would probably be like one of the first few times I can watch him wrestle and I cringe whenever he does. Because every time he does, I'm just I'm still I still get kind of scared whenever he wrestles. So um, this is the only one that I can think. I was like, I want Brian to win it. I sorry MJF. <laughs> well, I got two minds of this, and this sort of this sort of goes down to how AEW's heavyweight title scene has been looking over the last while. MJF has really. In, in my opinion, in terms of the matches that he's had since he's been champion, that Ricky Starks match did not set a very good standard into what the heavyweight division should be. Uh, maybe it was just nerves on both their ends because they were both newer or whatnot, but it just wasn't as crisp as you need as someone to lead your company. Could I see Danielson win this at the end with a fall like they could call for an instant overtime and let MJF lose it that way. Or they, or they end up with a draw and the champion retains. My personal feeling is that they're going to find a way to keep MJF strong, but I do feel that Danielson may come out of this as champion for the mere fact that we're entering an era now where the rosters are going to be a little bit more secluded because ROH is starting to be developed there's going to start being a little bit more of a pecking order and they really need to get their TV short up here. And as much as MJF is a hell of a wrestler and the future of pro wrestling here, what are, what are the cogs of the future of pro wrestling? Like, I know they talked about pillars or whatever. I don't care. There could be, there could be more than four pillars to a company if you ask me, but mm -hmm. he is going to be one of those future talents that, will lead wrestling 10 years down the road. But they might have pulled the trigger a little bit too early on them, even though everybody was crying for it to happen. It's be careful what you wish for, because you might actually get it. I think is a little <laughs> bit of what happened here. It wouldn't surprise me to see MJF keep the championship. He might uh, get himself DQ'd for using the ring uh, on... Uh, Danielson and then get a couple falls out of it kind of thing there might be side cheap right at the end but it all depends on who they want to go with as the next challenger here as well so they don't have anybody clearly set up as the next challenger for the heavyweight championship granted they have pay-per-views every four months so uh, they could take a little bit of a break for the heavyweight seat after this if I was a betting man I would go with Danielson, but it wouldn't surprise me if MJF wins this championship late or keeps the championship mm -hmm. late. Mm -hmm. But but overall, Asher, I, I, I think you can agree with me that there is a lot of positive momentum here coming up with AEW and with the pay-per-views. There, there's going to be faults in everything, right? Like we definitely want more women's action on the card. We definitely want the tag teams to be a little bit more established where Orange Cassidy and Dadhausen is considered your top four. 
but overall i think this is going to be a very solid card to watch and it's definitely going to be worth checking out yeah i feel like they had to do a little like re, re uh, shuffling kind of lately so i feel like maybe this is the way to like kind of hit that restart button going forward for aw and i feel like they really need to do that and it's really positive the fact that they only have four pay-per-views a year so they can actually run it into quarter little spots here and get these resets going on here but um it's going to be interesting to see I, I think i'll try and jot these picks down so we can see how right we were at the end of this after everything's all said and done so um but yeah that's going to wrap up our uh, aew uh, revolution prediction show here uh, make sure you check in the check out the pay-per-view this sunday and if you're at edmonton make sure you check out our sponsor here beercade yeg 105 42nd avenue uh there is re- if you want to reserve a table there is a number on the poster there feel free to give them a call or give them a text and uh, they'll set you up with uh everything you need there five dollar highball six dollar tequila great food great great atmosphere and I'll be there. So, you know, life is going to be even perfect. I know Andre C is confirmed to be there as well. So if you want to check out a few of us here, feel free to come by and say hi. Uh, we're always great to be, meet new people enjoy, that enjoy wrestling as much as uh, Astrid here does. And a big shout out right here to a- the natural Astrid Pizarro for joining me here. Astrid, what do you have coming up and what, uh, where can everybody go? Uh, see all your beautiful work uh you can find me uh, mostly on my twitter which is like my name astro pizarro as it's there i'm like not used to the other side um usually i talk about uh, nxt on tuesdays with my good friend ed and i do like uh, mike mentioned earlier making an impact with uh, cody which is on by picker media as well um aside from that i also do ladies wrestling showcase with my good partner mel uh we like to discuss women's wrestling from a female perspective in there uh but so you can find everything on my youtube there and my youtube has Ashley asked ladies wrestling showcase and making an impact there uh for you to check out um i usually do a lot of uh, some work also with a local establishment so i mean i'm doing a new show with bobby called killer cuts talking about horror movies so i'll be doing that Every so often now, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I usually talk about wrestling, but we'll see how that goes. I, I'm sorry, um, I'm just not a horror person. I, I, I get scared seeing Moxley in his promos. You can imagine what I do with horror films. Oh, no. I yeah. don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I will be talking about uh, horror movies on there. And I do have a trailer reaction for a stream on their channel as well. But, yeah, just doing a little bit of everything. And on the weekends, I do have an NXT review with Women's Wrestling Talk as well. Beautiful. And uh, yeah, all that uh, information will be available in the show notes here as well. So uh, feel free to check that out. Um, If you're watching this channel, you know where I've been. I've been around here for uh, about 10 years here covering this. But um, we're doing our gaming streams uh, Mondays, Wednesday night, or sorry, Monday nights thursday afternoons usually on the weekends wednesday night we always have our aw dynamite sidecast do not miss that out any week it is so much fun in there we we ended up putting rio over about 15 20 times this week and uh it's just a lot of fun for all of us here so um but i think that's gonna wrap it up anything else you want to say about revolution this weekend astrid no, I'm just mostly looking forward to the action, especially for the women's match, since it's the only one I have on the card. I gotta enjoy it somehow. <laughs> Absolutely, here, and I'm just looking forward to some good wrestling and some good momentum keeping up with AEW here. So, on behalf of uh, the Natural Astro Pizarro, I am Mike the Ref, and thank you for joining us here on the uh, Backbreaker Media AEW Revolution Preview Show. Wow, I spit that out all at once. All right, have a great day, everybody, and make sure you enjoy the pay-per-view on Sunday.